a better way to lose fat? Is it walking? Is it jogging? Is it running? Is it lifting? We're gonna find out today. I'm going to use my Garmin and see how many calories I burn walking, jogging, running, and also lifting. Calorie thing, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but I'm just gonna say not accurate. We'll use it so we can actually have something to compare it to. Warning here, the Garmin watch is not 100% accurate. No cardio machine in the gym is going to be accurate. At like a treadmill or anything where you're putting your hands on it, that's probably gonna be off by about 60 to 70%. A Garmin watch or like your Apple watch, that'll be closer to like maybe 30 to 40%. Not gonna be accurate, but let's give it a go anyway. What I have it set on is a 2.5 mile per hour speed. According to this, it's gonna take me about 31 minutes to walk this mile. Who need to watch all of this? I don't know, because I'm, I'm my own videographer. If someone wants to be my videographer and work for like peanuts, then that's an option. We're settling with me filming everything and walking. So let's go. Since I'm filming everything and I forgot to bring headphones, I'm just doing this in silence, like a sociopath. There's a new study that came out that said folks who walk between 2.5 miles an hour and 5 miles an hour have a greater likelihood of reducing their risk of type 2 diabetes. We'll say this, correlation does not equal causation. So many other factors that determine the reduction in type 2 diabetes. It's like daily activity, which would be walking, nutrition, sleep patterns, lifting weights, genetics. There are all these different factors. So it's really hard to cherry pick something and say, mm, this is what reduces it because you don't know what the person's life is like outside of just walking. But what I'm going to do right now, I'm walking at 2.5 miles an hour. For me, I usually walk closer to like three miles to 3.5 if I am on the treadmill. So I'm just going to increase my speed a little bit, three miles an hour. Feels pretty easy. Still holding the conversation. Just walking a little bit faster here. Um, that brought my time down from 31 minutes to 20 minutes, but 0.5 miles into this, I feel really good. Still walking at three miles an hour. Heart rate's chilling at like 93 beats per minute. Nothing too crazy, nothing too strenuous. I could probably keep this up for hours. How it is with walking. That's why it's one of the most beneficial things you can do. It's really open to anyone who is able-bodied who can walk. It's one of the easiest ways to increase your daily activity levels. It's kind of hard when someone comes out and says, well, you have to be walking at this speed to see the benefit. The reality is, if you're walking, you're walking, and that's going to help with your daily step count, which is a great way to track how active you are throughout the day. Someone taking 2,000 steps a day, who increases to 5,000 steps per day, will see benefit. Increasing to 7,500 steps per day, well, that's where we start to see the reduction in all-cause mortality starts at 7,500 steps per day that up to 10,000 and keep going up to 15,000 more, that's still where we see a greater reduction to do with how lean you are, how your insulin sensitivity is, all of those fancy terms. Yeah, quite possibly. Do you need to take 15,000 steps per day to be healthy? No, 7,500 is that starting point. And then beyond that, you'll see further benefit, but really 7,500 is that solid spot where we start to see all of the good things start to happen. Okay, so we hit our mile, took us uh, 20 minutes and 59 seconds. It was about 2.9 miles per hour. Total calories burned, according to the treadmill, 79 calories. Again, probably not as accurate as possible. I'm gonna take a sip of some water with some uh, electrolytes in it, just because it helps me keep my blood sugar up, because there's a little bit of sugar in this and I'm diabetic. And we're gonna go for a jog. Starting my jog, Four mile per hour jog, pretty easy for me. I think my goal that I'm setting for myself while I'm doing this is staying in zone two. So I don't want to get above 60 to 70% of my max heart rate because I'm keeping it easy. I'm keeping it at a jog. So that's going to influence how fast I'm going throughout this. Right now, my heart's at a 120 beats per minute. Light and easy for me, just me today, how I'm feeling. It says here it should take me about 15 minutes. So we're about seven minutes and 40 seconds in. We're at 0.5 miles. Heart rate's chilling at 135. Still sticking at the 4.0 mile per hour speed. 
So why am I trying to stay in zone two? Well, honestly, zone two is a speed that I could stick with for hours. That recovery zone that has so many health benefits associated with it for heart health, right? I'm after is what I can maintain because this honestly is a jog. I can get this conversation out. It doesn't sound like I'm overly winded, but you could tell I'm doing something strenuous right now. The run, I'm gonna be going at a much faster speed and that in and of itself, is gonna be something I can't sustain for long, long periods of time. So that's the biggest difference. Just wrapped up, uh, it took me about 14.53 to hit my mile. According to my Garmin, I burnt 147 calories. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a quick breather. By breather, I mean I have to poop, and then I'm going to run a mile. And I'm gonna aim for eight minute mile pace. I don't know, I just wanna get this done. Our speed is 7.5 miles an hour. Should take us eight minutes. Let's go. Oh, this is terrible. I don't run as much anymore. I do a lot of biking just to save my joints. But for a long period of time, this is what I did. I used to run on trails. Then I had a kid. That didn't happen as often. The key with running is thinking of controlled falling. So you're almost, you're picking up your leg before you even have the chance to fall. Always make sure you're looking forward while you run. <laughs> also, it helps to keep your hands loose so you're not just loose so it's easier. We want the top not to be super rigid while we're leaning our hips forward. Yes, our core is gonna engage, but we don't wanna be arched back. Just lean forward, breathe deep into that belly, and keep going. You can hear a huge difference in my talking right now from compared to where I was when I was doing zone two, right? Big difference. Halfway there, four minutes down. Don't wanna let your arms fly out. Keep them close to your body. That's why pulling is such an important part of a runner program too. Whether it be deadlifts, whether it be chin-ups, whether it be three-point rows, bent-over rows. If your back gets tired, you're gonna start rounding and your lower back's gonna start hurting. Want to keep that tall posture, pulling back through those shoulder blades, allowing the arms to move, loose hands. That's how Tom Cruise can move so fast. Two minutes left. I'm sweating quite a bit. I find it easier to run outside, actually. It's more natural to have that springy feel than when you're on a treadmill. Because you're controlling how far you're falling forward. Not as easy on a treadmill. Easy is a relative term. Ah. I'm shaking. No, I'm not. I just never really run anymore. Burned 107 calories. Took me eight minutes and 15 seconds. Now my goal is to get my heart rate down, so I'm just gonna walk, walk around the gym. So my heart rate was up there for that last mile because I don't really train running anymore. That's normal, that's okay. Now my goal while I'm walking around is to get my heart rate to come down as fast as possible. Uh, I was chilling around like 165, 170. I'm gonna keep walking around until I can get that to come down. Finish my workout at home so we can stick with this also so my wife can have a turn at the gym. That's mystery. Frozen. Okay, so since I'm home, workout's gonna be a little bit different. The main goal of this, and I'll talk through it after I'm done, is to use compound lifts, a lot of tension, basically so I'm milking them for all they're worth. But after that running, jogging, walking, it's more than enough. But tip to know, I had my running shoes on because I want to keep my wife happy. I always take my shoes off when I'm in the house. Right? Yes, I always take my shoes off. But you're going to be better off doing any sort of 
lifting and squatting, either barefoot or in minimalist shoes or in a pair of <laughs> a pair of Converse. Like wearing those keeps your heel closer to the ground, which makes you have more balance, which gives your foot more feedback, which is going to make you more stable while you're doing those exercises. What I'm performing here are eccentric RDLs. Now the eccentric part is when you lower it, you want to slow down as much as possible and clearly I am tired and I'm going really fast. Um, but a good thing to focus on when you're doing this is thinking about pushing your shins back while keeping a slight bend in the knee. That's going to keep constant tension on the hamstrings and the glutes. Uh, you want to focus on pushing your butt back as far as possible and pay attention to your hamstrings here. You'll notice that you can't go as far back if you are tight in the hamstring and in the hips. So it's also doubling as a mobility uh, exercise, and I think it's one of the best bang for your buck moves as possible. And as you can see here, I'm um, starting to speed up even more, and I'm having a hard time. When you stand up tall, another thing that folks tend to do is arch through the lower back when you stand up. What you want to think about doing is tucking your chin to your chest and tucking your hips, so squeezing your butt at the top first trying to arch your back. So you can keep a slight bend in your knee when you come up and just think about driving your hips forward. And that's going to allow you to stand tall and keep those hips in a good position, keep your lower back happy, and really, really challenge your hamstrings. So just a couple of things to keep in the back of your mind. Oh. Hi, Dad. Hi, buddy. I got my son over there. I finished up those RDLs. They were eccentric. So pause at the bottom. I wasn't going as slow as I possibly could. I'm, I'm tired after all that running beforehand. That's why doing it after would be better, but I wanted to get a true reading for calories, etc. A glute bias uh, step down. So almost like a reverse lunge from, uh, I'm about two steps up. So I'm going to hold on to this railing, right Tej? And I'm going to sit my butt back as far as I possibly can, tap the foot down, get that nice deep stretch, and then I'm going to pull myself back up and go right back into it. So there's, it's almost like there's a mix between constant tension and oh, just honestly, it's horrible. But it's a nice way to work on some hip flexor mobility, but also to get that nice deep bend and, and to really load up those glutes. So here I'm using a kettlebell. I'm using a uh, 24 kilo. Might be too heavy because um, my legs are very tired. So we'll see. Maybe I'll keep the rep short. Um, but again, I'm aiming for that, that 68 rep range. Um, I'm gonna finish up now with some sissy squats, just again to get uh, some quad, since I did a lot of hamstring and I did some quad for those step downs. And then we're done. We're gonna stretch it out, be done, and then we'll talk over everything. So apparently that workout, while well, my heart rate averaged 127 for 202 calories, felt like cardio. Not the same thing as cardio. All right, now we're all cleaned up after that workout. And I'm gonna be honest, my calves are so sore right now. I have not run like that in a while. It wasn't even that fast for most people, but for me, that was fast. So what you're gonna see here up on the screen are the calories that were burned during a one mile jog, a one mile walk, a one mile run, and about a 30 minute lift uh, using compound movements. And the calories range. The one that kind of threw me for a loop was the jog versus the run. The jog burnt about 147 calories, give or take. And the run only burnt 107 calories, give or take. I would think the run calories would be higher simply because you're using more energy to do that. You would technically burn more calories. To just illustrate this point, I want you to understand that 
If you want to debate whether walking or running is better for health, just to let you know, a walk burnt about 92 calories, a run, if even if we want to use 147 is how many calories I burnt, it's not that big of a difference. So if you're someone who can't run or who isn't at a place to run, understand walking still burns calories. Whether you walk a mile, whether you run a mile, whether you walk three miles, whether you run three miles, you're still going to burn probably in the same ballpark of calories. And But just to illustrate things. So my walk burnt about 92 calories. If you are trying to burn calories to lose weight by exercising and exercising alone, you are going to be fucked. And here's why. You could go for a, a one mile walk. That's equal to about one banana. One banana like this, about this size, is equal to those 92 calories, give or take a couple calories. Okay, so that's number one. So a walk burns that much. Now here's the cool thing about walking. It's open to anyone. Literally anyone could go for a walk. Now does that necessarily mean it's gonna be easy? No, if you are a larger individual, like an obese individual, Walking for you might just be getting up off the couch and walking to one end of the room and walking back and building up over time. The cool thing is, though, over time with consistency, your walking will improve and you can walk further and you don't get as out of breath. And that's the cool thing about the human body is the more you practice something, the better you get at it. Walking is like my favorite. I think everyone should do it. It's an easy way to reduce all cause mortality and you will improve pretty quickly. The jog, technically, from what our Garmin said, and again, it's not accurate, said I burnt 147 calories. This is 150 calories. It is a half cup of oatmeal, rolled oats actually. It's not cooked. This is all it is. That's 150 calories. So go for your jog and then think you burnt a bunch of calories and then come home and eat a nice, delicious, fiber packed, fueling, carbohydrate, delicious. I don't know many other words I can use to describe this, but oatmeal is my favorite. This is all it would take to eat back those calories. All right. Now the next one is the run. Now the run it technically was 107 calories. I'm fairly sure that was not accurate, but because it was only 107 calories, just to illustrate it using something else, this is a half of a Hershey's milk chocolate bar. So that one mile run that took me eight minutes, burnt technically according to this, 107 calories, probably not accurate, but that would only be this much. That's literally six pieces broken apart, right, of a Hershey's milk chocolate bar. You could eat that really fast. I'm gonna guarantee if you are trying to burn your calories from running, you would easily eat more than just half the bar. You'd probably eat the whole bar you are doing uh, cardio, for some individuals, they find that their hunger increases, which on the whole, for most individuals, most of the clients I work with, your hunger increases. So having something highly palatable, like a, a chocolate bar, you're, you're not really probably going to be able to stop. Um, something that's going to be much harder if you are trying to do more cardio to lose weight. Just illustrating that alone from cardio, these three things are very easy to consume. It's very easy to eat back the calories you were trying to burn because your hunger levels increase. Now, my lift was about 26 minutes. It was a mixture of constant tension uh, RDLs and step ups, um, really focusing on a lot of uh, glute work. And it was also sissy squats to failure. So I did three sets of each exercise, took ample rest time. Now, according to my Garmin, I burnt about 202 calories in those 26 minutes. My heart rate did get elevated, but it's not the same as when you were doing something like cardio. Um, although people like to say squatting is my cardio, it's not. It doesn't have the same heart health benefits. Uh, it has tons of benefits, but not the exact same benefits as if you were doing some cardiovascular work. 202 calories, this is about 47 grams of chocolate Teddy Grahams. This is 204 calories. So basically, it's a handful of Teddy Grahams is 204 calories. Delicious calories, but again, very easy to eat back, especially if you're packing that for your kid's lunch and you're snacking on it. Like, it's so easy to eat that back. I use this to illustrate that lifting does burn calories. Um, walking burns calories. Jogging burns calories. 
Uh, running burns calories. Everything burns calories. Even me standing here talking and moving my hands, that burns calories. But when it comes to weight loss and when it comes to general health, attempting to manipulate your weight just by exercising and exercise alone is a horrible plan because you are actually going to eat back those calories because you need to eat to live. And if you are planning on just cutting your calories and cutting your calories and cutting your calories, well, that is not a very healthy lifestyle. It's not maintainable. And folks who do that sort of thing usually have some sort of disordered relationship with exercise, with food, and that's not what we're after. It's completely possible to improve your health without crazy cutting of calories or increasing crazy amounts of exercise or cardio. What I think is best is what has worked for hundreds of my clients is just having well-balanced practices. A well-balanced practice, instead of trying to burn your calories through exercise, would be eating balanced meals. Eating Balanced plates that have ample sources of fiber, protein, fruits, and vegetables, and, and healthy fats, like that is a wonderful thing to do. If you're not sure where to get started, aiming for about three plates, three balanced plates per day with about 50% vegetables, 25% carb, 25% protein, and a thumb or two or fat is a great place to get started. The notes below, click download my free fat loss guide with just your email address, all you have to enter, and I literally walk you step by step through how to lose weight in a sustainable way without doing dumb things you see on the internet. You could have two snacks. What are those two snacks? I don't know, I'm gonna leave it up to you. But if you do make it protein-based, you're gonna have an easier time sticking within your calorie range. Number two, I would really, really focus on increasing the amount of water you're drinking. Most individuals aren't drinking enough water. You tend to drink things that are higher in calorie. Even switching to diet soda will help you. But in general, adding an extra glass of water or aiming for half your body weight in ounces of water, that's a good rule of thumb. Three, I would really suggest hitting about 7,500 steps per day. Now, I mentioned how walking is available to a lot of people. If you're hitting about 7,500 steps per day, you are increasing the amount of daily activity you are doing. It's very scalable. If we increase our NEAT, then we will find that it's easier to regulate our calorie intake and regulate the amount of energy we are using throughout the day. 7,500 steps, research has found, is where we start to see all the major health benefits, um, such as reduce more all-cause mortality. We see a reduction in diabetes, a reduction in stroke, reduction in heart disease, reduction in cancer. And in general, it's because people who are more active during the day tend to be more lean. Um, does that make them necessarily healthy? I don't know. Let's start at 7,500 steps. When we go above that, we only see more health benefits, but it doesn't mean everyone has to be taking 15 to 20,000 steps per day. That's not realistic for everyone, nor do I recommend my clients do that. 7,500 is what we aim for. Or I would say is strength training. Strength training two to three times per week is an awesome place to be. As we lose weight, we tend to lose muscle mass. So we want to preserve as much lean muscle mass as we can. We want to build muscle because muscle mass does help increase our metabolism slightly. It takes more energy to have more muscle. And also, as we age, we tend to lose muscle mass. So we want to make sure that we really are preserving that lean muscle mass, especially as we get older. You also improve your bone density by lifting, and that's very important for females who are at risk as osteoporosis and osteopenia as you get older, as you go through menopause. I would really focus on is sleep. If we are trying to lose fat and burn calories in a sustainable way and not have everything be wonky, hitting at least seven to nine hours of sleep at night is going to be a great place to be. If you're not doing that, you're going to find it's much harder to stick to that goal because hunger and fullness signals get all sorts of messed up if we are not getting enough sleep. Stress levels. Working on managing your stress is going to be very, very helpful. When stress levels go up, cortisol goes up. When cortisol goes up, everyone likes to talk about it, but it does lead to some inflammation, lead to water retention, and can make things harder when you're making food choices as well. So make sure that we are doing some form of cardio. Does it have to be running? No. Does it have to be biking? I don't know. It could really be the thing that you are most consistent with. And I would recommend doing zone two work just to build general heart health and occasionally one time per week doing high intensity intervals that could be on the stationary bike, which is where I do them because they're not as, uh, not as hard impact, but you could also do it on the elliptical. You could do it on the rower. It doesn't really matter so long as you're doing it, but 
Does everyone need to be doing it right away? No. Should every session be like that? No. It's about finding balance and what works best for you. The important thing out of all of this is that you have a plan that you feel like you can stick with. And if you need some help with that, well, you can click below to apply for some online coaching. I've helped all my clients at this point lose hundreds upon hundreds of pounds. Um, and it's by doing sustainable things that work within your lifestyle that you can actually sustain versus doing something that is not sustainable, such as trying to exercise enough to burn enough calories to eat. That is a horrible place to be with your nutrition and with your exercise. You want those things to be a part of a healthy lifestyle. You don't want to create a unhealthy, unsustainable lifestyle. I hope you learned a bit. I hope it's stuff that you can apply. And please go ahead, subscribe, turn on those notifications, make sure you comment below if there's something else you would like me to cover. I really, really enjoy doing videos like this. That was a fun little challenge. If you wanna see something else like that, just let me know. And without further ado, thank you for being here. I hope you can realize you're only one day away from getting back on track and one day away from realizing how freaking amazing you are.